Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our gathering song today is Christ Before Us. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And also, good morning. Good morning, Father. With the fifth Sunday of Lent, we are united with the whole church to come to give thanks and praise to God because we are getting closer to the Holy Week, a very special time that we are going to be united with the Lord in His suffering and death before we celebrate him in his resurrection and our own eternal life. A beautiful season that we will make a good use of it in order to come closer to God and to purify ourselves. And with the new covenant God made in the first reading today with Jeremiah, we learn that God loved to stick himself with his people to bring the blessing and protection. For this we come to give him thanks and praise. And also that today we have the third scrutiny for our candidates to receive the Our Father. As candidates, they have nearly the full right of Catholics to be blessed as Catholics and also to be able to call the Almighty God Father together with us. So today they are going to receive the Our Father and together with us they are going to pray the Our Father with us. We we'll keep them in our prayer uh, during the scrutiny and also keep them in their journey of faith that they will come closer to God the same way we are doing. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. your help, we beseech you, O Lord, our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world, your Son handed him over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord.
Panuji with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Among those who had come up to worship at the feast of Passover were some Greeks. They approached Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and put this request to him. Sir, we should like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Then Philip and Andrew in turn came to inform Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I solemnly assure you, unless the grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. The one who loves his life loses it, while the one who hates his life in this world preserves it to life eternal. If anyone would serve me, let him follow me where I am, there will be my servant. Anyone who serves me, the Father will honor. My soul is troubled now. Yet what should I say, Father, save me from this hour? But this was for this, this was for this, that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then the voice came from the sky, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. When the crowd of bystanders heard the voice, they said it was a thunder. Others maintained an angel was speaking to him. And Jesus answered, that voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now has judgment come upon this world, and now will this world springs be driven out. And I, once I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. This statement of his and this statement of his indicated the sort of death he was going to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In dealing with one another, we human beings have different forms of agreements. At times we may call it a, an agreement uh, beyond the promises. We have something written down, like an agreement or uh, 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 treaty or uh, contract. Uh, just different forms of different things uh, for, for dealing with one another. But then there is a form of dealing that just sounds very much it's exclusively Christian, which is called a covenant. And in fact, the term covenant is very exclusively used by God through His prophets. God loved to make His uh, God loved to make covenants with His people. Here and there, we can name the most obvious obvious one. Right? He made a covenant with. Abraham for the land and the people, and Abraham left everything to follow God's teaching, and then he became the father of our faith. Not only for us Catholic, but for us all, all of us Christians and Jewish people and even Muslims. The Muslims call Abraham the father of their faith as well, because they believe in the same God, the same one God with us. And then God made the Ten Commandments and gave it to Moses. And he made it a covenant on the mountain in Sinai during the time the people of God was traveling from slavery in Egypt back to the Holy Land. 
And then God made covenant with David and with the children. The more we, we, we read the Bible, the more we see that God loves to make covenants with His people. And this kind of agreement is very awesome. Because according to the way God wanted to make a covenant with His people, we learned one of the main things, that I shall be your God and you will be my people as we learn it in the first reading today with Isaiah that Lucy brought it to us. I shall be your God, but you will be my people. The first part, I shall be your God, God has been always faithful to it, to his agreement. We, people may call it an agreement, a promise, or a contract, or a treaty. No. God called it a covenant. I make a covenant with you. I shall be your people. And he has always been with us as our God, protecting, blessing, and even, we may even say hanging around with us because he loved to relate to us. He loved to talk to Abraham and Moses as a friend to a friend. And that's why the people of God called him the God of our fathers, the God of uh, Abraham, the God of Jacob and Isaac, the God who loves to relate to His people and the God who loves to make covenants with His people. In reflecting on this direction, we begin to ask the question, then what is the difference between a covenant and a other different forms of agreement like treaty, contract, uh, or pledge of allegiance, uh, anything. And then the answer may come very striking and even scary. Why was it that God didn't want to use the word agreement or contract, but he kept using only one term, covenant. And even though the whole book of the Bible did not define it exactly but the way God the way God made the covenant and the way God kept the covenant with his people make us sound striking because the main difference is that even though the other party the other side is not faithful to the God covenant God the other side is still faithful to it and that is the distinction we can find it in the way he made the covenant with his people. Other forms of agreement, like a treaty, like a contract, when one party doesn't keep it, the other party would not be would not be bound by that. It means that you can walk free. With any kind of promise, when the other side doesn't keep it, you are allowed to walk free. But then, the way God did it, and the way God chose the term covenant, I make a covenant with you, even though the other party, his people, turn away from him, being unfaithful to him, he was still binding himself to it. He has been faithful to the extreme, and that is our God, the God who loved to make covenants with his people and the God who bind himself to his promise and his covenant. It may sound simple and easy but in fact it is striking and even scary because God promised to be our God. Whatever to be done as a God for us he had done it. And he is still doing it these, these days. He is faithful to the extreme. He is faithful to the end, no matter what. So, it helps us now to see that why. Why, during the time of the land that we need to be fasting and praying more and doing different things uh, to purify ourselves, the church arranged different readings and, 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 and the gospel to remind us about the covenant God has made with us or covenants 
in plural form. Because God is faithful to the end. God is faithful even to the extreme, we may say. So, so that because He promised to be our God to the end, whatever needs to be done, He would do it, including the suffering and death of His only Son. The Gospel today tells us about the suffering and the death and the agony Jesus would be going through. And Jesus never thought of walking away from it. He said that he, he was troubled now. So because of the suffering, the death and the, all the misunderstanding and the blame and all the shame and the death, the shameful death on the cross came to his, his mind. He knew it. And it, it troubled him. But did he, did he ever have any idea to walk away from it? No, not at all. And that is the extreme expression of God's faithfulness to his promise and to his covenant, to his people. So Lent is not about ourselves. Lent is not only about our prayer, not only about our fasting and, and praying. Come on, Lent is not a time for self-centeredness. It is not about our, us. It is about the God who loves us and who cares about us. It is the God who wants to go to the extreme even in order to fulfill His promise and His covenant of His people. So, a few weeks ago when we learned to say that God so loved the world, how much? This much. He gave His only Son. We, human beings, we never wanted to give our only son or our only child. Uh, even, I mean, not only the only child, not a child from our family to anybody who may hurt or harm our child. But God did. So, when people ask us, that, yeah, you say that God so loved the world, but so how much? We tell them that God so loved the world that He gave His only son for us. And he knew it. He may even kill him. And we did. And now, with the gospel and with the liturgy of the world today, we can tell people, our God is so faithful, so faithful to the end, so faithful to the extreme. And people will ask us that, yeah, how faithful is he? We will tell him, God is so faithful that even facing the suffering and death in his son, he never falter. And the Son of God came into the world to live with us, to bless us, to teach us, and to heal us. And then now, we make it happen that the wrong way, to make Him die for us. But to God, it is still the right way, because God has promised He will keep His promise. God has made the covenant of, with His people, that He shall be our God. He shall be our God to the end, even to the extreme of His faithfulness. My brothers and sisters, today our candidates for the sacraments of initiation, which is baptism, first communion, and confirmation, they are doing their third scrutiny. And the scrutinies are the right intended to purify the candidates' minds and hearts, doing the same thing the same way with us during Lent, to strengthen them against temptation, to purify their intention, and to make firm their decision through self-searching and repentance. 
The spiritual purpose is to uncover and heal all that is weak, defective, and sinful in their heart, and to bring out and strengthen all that is already strong, good, and upright. And now I'd like to ask the candidates, if, if you are at home, then please stand up. And uh, if you have your sponsor with you, and you are going to stand together. But keep the mask on, okay? And the community, I'd like to invite you to pray in silence for our candidates, asking God to give our candidates a sense of sin, a spirit of repentance, and the true freedom of the sons and daughters of God. Now, dear candidates, the elect of God, please kneel down or bow your heads and in silence pray and reflect on those times when you have failed to put your faith in God, on the times when you have given in to despair, on the times when you have neglected the call to love and kindness, and on the times when you have failed to stand up for what is right. As Catholics in the future, we are going to do the same thing, reflection regularly. So the sponsors, if you are with our candidates, would please put your hands on the shoulder of our, our candidates. Now let us pray for these elect from whom God had chosen. May the grace of the sacrament conform them to Christ in his passion and resurrection and enable them to triumph over the bitter fate of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The rest of us would please raise your right hand and we think of our candidates and we pray for Holy Spirit to come upon them and also to bless them. Father of life and God, of not the dead, but of the living, you send your Son to proclaim life, to snatch us from the realm, realm of death, and to lead us into the resurrection. Free this elect from the death-dealing power of the spirit of evil, so that they may bear witness to their new life in the risen Christ, for he, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, by raising Lazarus from the dead, you show that you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Free from the grasp of death, those who await your life-giving sacraments, and deliver them from the spirit of corruption, through your spirit, who gives light, fill them with faith, hope and love, that they may live with you always in the glory of your resurrection. For you are our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. They are blessed with our unity and our prayer for them. And our um, candidates, uh, enjoy your day and also keep reflecting on the word of God. And now you are allowed to call Almighty God, Father together with all of us. Our candidates are going to profess the same faith with us very soon so we are going to do it they are they are watching the mass so we are going to do it together do you believe in god the father almighty the creator of heaven and earth i do do you believe in jesus christ his only son our lord who was born of the virgin mary who suffered death and was buried rose again from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the father i do 
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Do you? I do. I do too. This is the faith of the whole church. This is our faith, and we are proud to profess it, and we are proud to share it with people around us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. With the same confidence, we are going to bring to God our needs and our petitions. For the church, our Pope, bishops and priests, may they continue to lead and guide us spiritually to remain rooted in Christ during this difficult time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our government leaders, the civil servants, servants the law enforcement, May God help them serve, act, and decide for peace, for justice, liberty, and well-being of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing on our country, for peace, healing, and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nativity parish and school families, our ministries, volunteers, and staff, may we remain connected in communion, united in faith, in prayer, and rootedness in Christ. And for all of us who are watching in our homes, in union with us spiritually in the Mass, may God protect and bless all of you with health, peace, faith, and passion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elect, their sponsors, as they approach the sacrament of initiation, May they grow together in faith, in wisdom, and love to become bold witnesses and the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions in our website prayer wall of our priests and parishioners, the deceased and the sick in the community, for Joseph Lingyu, Tom Nicholson, Eva Raffles Manalan, and Mario Cruz, Jim Đức Thành, Gia Chi Muñoz Baduelos, the family of Ochoa, Torres, Sedano, Gonzalez, Andrade, and Rodriguez. For Sandra Cananea, Ian Roxas, Pearl Sanchez, Michael Burnett, Ramon, Ramona Loera, William Torres, Victoria Rose, and Ruben Franco. Father Peter Thoa, Maxima La Reina, Olivia Hernandez, Jesse Lariva, Samar Doni, Yui Fan, Miguel, Angel Mira Senor, Father Joseph Kena. And for those celebrating their birthday, Ruben Ruiz and Jaime Rendon, Aleli Tirados, Mario Mapante. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our healthcare workers, our heroes these days, for those infected with the COVID virus, for the repose of the souls of those who have succumbed to the virus, especially our brother and our friend, Sergio Barranco. We pray for peace and consolation for his family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's healing, all of our sick people at this time, Hassan Sayyad, Salvador Wong, Pedro Garcia, Benito Castillo Sr., Lorraine Chavez, Steve and Jackie Chavez, Hinton, <coughs> Dustin Matthew, for God's blessing and protection on Villa Senor family, Christina Nguyen family, and for the Montecito neighborhood families. For those who have lost their job or business, may God in His mercy answer their prayer. And for all the prayers and the intention we hold in the silence of our heart, and also the intentions of our loved ones.
for all these intentions, spoken and unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of life, you are the source of the destiny of our lives. Calm the storms in our lives and kindle your spirit within us. And hear the prayers we offer through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now, before we go on with our Mass, uh, on behalf of Father Roberto and whole community, I'd like to thank you for your continued support for our church and our school through your Sunday offering. May God keep blessing all of us. and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teaching of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. The Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks and praise. To humble our sinful pride. And contribute to the feeding of the poor. And so help to... Help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the do fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread with giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and bring it from me. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, you may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the whole world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection or who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs with eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray the prayer our Lord Jesus has taught us together with our candidates. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the for kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. So look not on our sins, but on the faith of your entire church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
We have a few announcements before we receive communion and go home. Huh? Due to the risk of infection in the large gathering, there will be no penitential service uh, this land together. So we do it more in the personal way. Now please take advantage of our confession on Fridays from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. and also from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. every Friday. And please visit our website for our Holy Week schedule. And next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And we encourage you to wear red if you can because the color for Palm Sunday is red. And palms will be distributed during the celebration. And Father Roberto suggested if you want to paint your car red, it's okay. It's okay. Just to be sure that after that you would not get into trouble with the police. Anyway, anything red you can bring along for celebration of Palm Sunday. We make it festive that way. Huh? Okay. And the Nativity Church is starting a young adult ministry. We haven't got one for many years, and then our people ask for it as well. So we thank God that we are, our, we are having the core team of six or seven people coming together. So they try to build it up so that the young adult can hang around and support one another during this difficult time. Uh, so the young adult ministry the, um, is going to be uh, officially in our parish soon. Now we invite all the young adults, 18, 18 years old and up, up to my age, 65, right? And to attend the Zoom meeting on March 29th, on Monday, at 6.30 p.m. I'd like to repeat it. March 29th, Monday, at 6.30 p.m. And you may find the Zoom info in our church Facebook platform, My Nativity Church and Monte. Thank you. And please keep our young adult people in our community, in our prayer, so that they get together and support one another, to pray for one another, and also to do something good for the society in the future as well. Huh? So have a beautiful Sunday, and may God keep blessing you. And the, the new administration has been pushing even harder to have more vaccines available for us already. So during last week, I learned of about 12 people who are not in any uh, group of priorities have already received it, which means that they are having it more available now. So if you check on a website, a location that uh, they may not be ready for you, check another location, check another website, because uh, there are different places that uh, they provide um, vaccine for many uh, already. Uh -huh. Oh, we got another good news. Father Roberto just reminded me that in our website there is a link for, for, for our own El Monte residents. So we belong to El Monte, so we are the, the priority group to get into that website in order to get vaccinated. So it's more and more available now. So check our website, we have information in there. Thank you, and God bless you. Now we have the final blessings. Are you ready? The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's special blessing. And Father Roberto is here, would you please bless the people together? Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gifts of your mercy. And grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Let us go the peace of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a nice Sunday. Stay safe until we get the vaccine. Huh? Mm -hmm.